He's the senior NBA writer covering the NBA and the Lakers for The Athletic. It's good to have Joe Varden back on the program. Joe, where are you right now? Uh, Coronado Springs in Lake <laughs> Buena Vista, Florida. Okay. Now, how much access freedom do you have to come and go inside the hotel? So what I've been doing is when I get a knock on my door for my food, um, I open the door very slowly and I stand on both sides of the, uh, of the door for several seconds to milk as much fresh air as I can out of picking up my food. Um, Cause that's it. The only time you can open your door is to pick up your food uh, or to uh, step outside for just a second to get the COVID test. That's the only freedom I have for the, until Monday. Can you visit other members of the media? No. You can't walk down the hall? No. And first of all, uh, you know, with, with most of the Disney hotels, it's not, um, they aren't Marriott's. So it's more of a motel feel like the, the hall, there is no hallway. It's just outside. Okay. Um, but yeah, can't, yeah, you can't do anything. But how long does this go for? Um, as long as I continue to test negative, uh, for, for the virus, I will be allowed out of quarantine on Monday. So it's a, it's a seven or eight day quarantine. Any yard time? This feels like Shawshank Redemption. Can you hit the weights? <laughs> no. And, and um, I, I just finished uh, my second workout in quarantine, which is I do uh, 100 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, crunches, uh, dips, and burpees. And then I run from, let's see if I could do this on my camera here. Right. I run from that sink <laughs> to that door and back uh, for 20 minutes. It was a little over two miles. So that's uh, that's my yard time, my man. And then I uh, I wipe the sweat up off the floor and try to clean up and turn this into a workspace. I did shower. I did shower before coming on. How confident are you? This is will start on time, and that will actually crown a champion. A hundred percent on the start time. Okay. I, I think we're great. And I don't know. I mean, um, I still am in that stage where I feel like they've done this right and they've done this well, and it will probably work. Um, and, and I don't even want to say maybe, I mean, I, I really think that this is going to happen. Um, maybe it's in part because of all the protocols I have to go through. And I just feel like everybody here is doing it for the most part. And, um, the thing that feels the best is I feel like if, if you step out of line and do something dangerous, they're going to catch you uh, and you will be punished as, as we have seen already with these two guys who have uh, broken quarantine. And explain what they did to break quarantine. Like how, how does that happen that you're ordering food and it's being delivered? And did somebody rat out one of these players or both of these players? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, what we, <laughs> With the case of, of Bruno, um, he was, I, I think he had a buddy uh, who was trying, who was going to drive him up something that he wanted, like something to wear um, while, while he was, while he was down here and just lost his mind. Like you, it's so unequivocally clear that, uh, that you cannot leave your room while you're in quarantine. Um, and then of the case with the case of Holmes, right? Like he went too far in picking up the food that that he had ordered. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you can call these mistakes, but they really they aren't. I think it's more of just um, not being used to having to follow a certain set of rules, and uh, and and you know, I, I think that reality is going to set in here. I like the Rockets as a dark horse here. We'll get into who you like and uh, are the Lakers still the favorites here? But Russell Westbrook testing positive. He's acknowledged that he tested positive. We're still waiting for uh, James Harden. Uh, yeah. But what, what, is there a reason why he's not there? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's because of, of the virus. Um, he just has chosen not to uh, announce it and the, the teams can't do it okay. unless uh, they have the player's uh, permission. So, you know, as of a couple of days ago, you had Mike D'Antoni saying, well, these three players aren't here and we can't say why. Uh, and then Russ kind of comes out yesterday and, and says that he has, in fact, had the virus. And the, just the time frame. So Westbrook is going to start on time. Uh, well, we don't know that. I mean, we, we, we don't know. Um, we, you have D'Antoni saying first earlier in the week, well, yeah, they'll, they'll all probably be here by midweek. And then last night it was, well, I hope that's what happens. I'm not sure. I mean, here's, here are the rules. 
um, once you test positive, okay, so you have to have you have to have these things. You have to be asymptomatic. Um, you have to record two ne consecutive negative tests over a period of longer than 24 hours. Um, you have to go through a complete medical screening. Uh, and, and then for, if you're a player, you have to uh, clear a heart screening because um, apparently there's some cardio related issues here. Um, so th those are the rules. Um, when they got sick, we don't know. Or when they contracted the virus, we don't know. Um, typically, what doing everything I just said could take up to two weeks. So, you know, I don't know how long this is going to be for those guys. I, I think they will be back in time to start the season on, on July 30th, but don't know. We talked, we're talking to Joe Varden, uh, senior NBA writer covering the NBA and the Lakers for the athletic. And speaking of the Lakers with Avery Bradley, not there now, Rajon Rondo out for at least six weeks. How big a deal is this for the Lakers? The, the, the um, Avery Bradley thing is huge. I, I really do. I think it weakens them. Um, it certainly affects them defensively on the perimeter. Um, and when you look at how deep the Clippers are and how healthy the Clippers are now, which they really had never been the whole season, um, I think there is a lot to be concerned about uh, on the Lakers. The, the Rondo issue, I mean, yeah, he was their backup point guard. Um, he was taking the ball uh, when LeBron was, was on the bench, and that, that certainly matters. Um, this had not been a good season for, for Rajon. Um, and certainly he had been discussed as, as a potentially weaker link in this Laker team uh, around the trade deadline. And ultimately they, they didn't make a move there really. So, um, you know, I don't know what the options are per se when with, with Rajan out, but, but of the, the two injuries, I, I definitely think it's Bradley. Who do you uh, favor coming out of the West? The Clippers, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, you know, Dan, I, I've spent most of my NBA career covering LeBron. Um, I don't like to bet against him, uh, certainly in, in 2018 in Cleveland was, um, <laughs> one of the most unsung acts of basketball heroism that'll probably ever go, uh, him getting that team that far. Um, but I just, I am bowled over by the Clippers situation right now. Healthy Paul George, healthy Kawhi Leonard, super deep with all the, uh, the moves that were made around the trade deadline, um. I, I don't know. I think they're the team to beat. But if but if the Lakers had Bradley and Rondo, would you feel different? No. Okay. Um, listen, I, I you know, I, I think the Lakers had a fantastic regular season. I really commend that such an uh, I mean, they're an old team with the new coach and Frank Vogel. Um, I, I really commend for how they went about their business and them catching the bucks and being in first place at the time of the pandemic hitting is is awesome. But, you know, these NBA seasons are funny and and we are actually often see that the best regular season team doesn't win, doesn't always that doesn't get to the finals or necessarily win it. Um, and in the case of the Clippers, they were always kind of doing this slow build um, and, and they probably more than any team benefit from, you know, this three and a half, four month layoff. The degree of difficulty, though, is like I can't if you win the title this year, I get there's no asterisk. The, the whole season has an asterisk, but it feels like this, Joe, that those who don't like LeBron creeping up on Michael Jordan will add an asterisk to this, that this is different than anything that Michael accomplished. Like it's just weird. And, and you've been around, you know, LeBron all, you know, for most of his career. It feels like people go out of their way to attach things to bring LeBron down a notch. Your thoughts if he does win a title with this team? Well, I, I just, I would like someone uh, to explain to me uh, how the, how these differing circumstances would then suggest that, that a title doesn't count. I mean, you still have to win four, four games and four playoff series. Um, the teams aren't any worse, <laughs> you know, like they, they, everybody has their players at the start of this. And if somebody goes out with the virus, well, how is that actually different from them going down with an ACL or a, you know, an ankle? Um, I, when you talk about degrees of difficulty, I mean, I guess, sure there, you don't have to go um, into, you know, Milwaukee's, what is it? Five serve forum, I think is the new arena there. You don't have to go there in June and win, but you know, you also don't get to play at Staples center. And in the meantime, 
everybody has the same, you know, crappy being away from your family, being out of your own bed for three months without stop. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't get it from, for this asterisk stuff. Um, and if LeBron wins another one now, I mean, geez, that's what that's for um, on what three different teams. That's, it's pretty good. <laughs> I also wonder about this, Joe, and you uh, made mention of this. This is an old team. And I wonder what will the Lakers look like next year? Because LeBron knows that the clock is ticking. You still have Anthony Davis and hopefully he stays, but uh, you know, Kyle Kuzma, this is a Kyle Kuzma moment to step up and play big boy basketball as well. But what do you think this lineup, this roster looks like uh, next year with the Lakers? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think you're going to see turnover for sure. It's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to know how this pandemic affects free agency and affects teams, various cap situations and contract situations with options and whatnot. Um, I, I think that, that LeBron and Anthony are together for at least one more year. You know, I, I've been thinking about this. It's funny, you know, that you asked it because I, I was thinking about this this morning on my run from the mirror to the door. Um, you know, LeBron was probably going to play a couple more years. Um, you know, he's 35 now. He'll be 36 in December. I, I think he would at least play out this contract with the Lakers. And I, and I suppose that's probably still true. But the added stress of the virus um, – I just wonder if it's taking years off of his career. I mean, he's, like I said, he's going to be 36. He's been through so much. And when it gets more and more dangerous to play this game, what else does he need to do? Um, how much time does he want to spend away from those boys uh, in the middle of all this? So, you know, I have not spoken to him since March, I guess. Um, and I haven't seen him. I, so I'm not saying I know that, that this is cutting his career short, but I wonder, I mean, he's, He's got all these businesses. He's getting more involved politically. Um, I, you know, I, I, I could see this being something that weighs on a guy when you can start to consider how much longer you want to play. What's he chasing? Yeah, I mean, so after he won in Cleveland in 2016, he said, what, I'm chasing Michael's ghost, which meant he's chasing six. Theoretically, he has time, but, you know, he's probably not going to get there. And so, you know, his leg, his legacy was cemented when he won in Cleveland. I think that's true. Um, I don't think he can hurt it uh, by playing with the Lakers, especially because he did rebound from a bad start. Um, you know, I, I mean, if, if he is second best, does winning another one make him first best? <laughs> uh, no, he, I don't think so. But, but um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how much, I don't know what else he is chasing. It's just more about enjoying what you're doing in life. And you know what's going to happen. If Kawhi wins a title with the Clippers, so now he's won three titles with three different franchises, all of a sudden that will reduce what LeBron accomplished if he doesn't win a title with the Lakers. I, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it like that, Dan, but you're probably right. Um, it's just Kawhi like, I don't know how many titles Kawhi has to win to get into the discussion with LeBron. Um, and he's probably not going to get there because he's not a regular season performer. Oh uh, well, yeah. But, but you know, if he's winning titles, um, I don't know. He's a, I, it feels like though LeBron, we, we've said, Oh man, he's won titles with Cleveland and he won with Miami. And now if he wins with the Lakers, but if Kawhi beats him to the punch, then I, it just feels like people say, yeah, so what? Kawhi did it before LeBron. Yeah, no, I, th I think you're right. I think, but some of this has to do with um, your star power. When Just when you're talking about, when you get into these kinds of discussions and like Kawhi just isn't LeBron. He's like, he's, he's, not, um, he, he's not the same personality, which I think matters. I mean, if you look at, you know, I, I mean, Michael certainly was that and LeBron certainly was that. And then behind him, you know, Kobe was that. I mean, I don't know what your order is, but I'm just saying that that matters. And uh, when you're when you get into these barbershop discussions and Kawhi just doesn't have that personality, he never has. But I wonder and I, I brought this up when we do those top 10 lists or greatest mm -hmm. players of all time, who's moving in? in let's say the next five to seven years and who's moving out of the top 10 list, you know, cause Durant 
Steph Curry, Kawhi, Greek Freaks not there yet to move into the top 10. But if if you see, like, Steph Curry is a top 10 player of all time, would you say? Durant, top 10 player of all time. And if that's the case, is Carl Malone moving out? Is Larry Bird moving out? Because somebody's got to move out if these guys are moving in. I mean, does... Uh... I, I think Durant's probably probably already there. Um, I, oh, as far as top five, I, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I get tripped up by this stuff, Dan. I, oh, I, I do I too. Don't know. I do too, I, Joe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, like I, I was thinking about this as you were talking, I was thinking about it from the Tiger Woods perspective. Um, he's on my mind because he's coming back to play this week in golf in uh, the city between our two hometowns. Uh, and, and, you know, we uh, like it when when Rory came out, came onto the tour and Jordan Spieth, like those two were they were going to be the next Tiger and neither one of them turned out to be the next Tiger. And so, like, we have a top five, I guess. And we have like like LeBron absolutely took the mantle from from Michael. He, he was the heir, uh, still is. Um, who Who is the next one? I mean, there, there's going to be one, but it we have seen throughout history that they don't come automatically right away. Like they, they aren't there immediately to take the reins. And so maybe it's Giannis, maybe it's Zion. Um, you know, Steph and Steph and Kevin Durant are great, but they're older players. Like neither one of them have a ton of time left. And, and Kevin Durant is coming off that injury that you don't know. Uh, how, like it's the worst injury you can have in the NBA. So, I mean, how good is he going to be? I'm not sure. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know that there's that there's much movement in the next five to seven years. Yeah, I feel like if one of those guys wins another title, especially if Steph move, Steph might already be there because he's considered the best shooter of all time, and uh, you know, so that 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 carries a lot of cachet. If the NBA could give Zion a buy into the <laughs> to, into the first round to face the Lakers, would they do that? If they could do that privately, that they could manipulate it and have Zion face the Lakers in the opening round. Listen, they, yeah, they, they have already, <laughs> yes, yes, they, they've already quasi done it. I mean, you know, they, they set up the, the whole NBA regular season TV schedule last summer for this season on Zion Williamson. I mean, yes, LeBron had something to do with it too. Yes, the Warriors had something to do with it too, but the whole thing was set up for him. And a week before the season starts, he has surgery on his knee or he announced that that's what's going to happen. I mean, that wrecked their whole thing, cost them millions of dollars in TV ratings. Yeah. It did. Yeah. And so now they set up this, uh, this post like this restart basically with this totally unique set of rules. So Zion has a chance um, <laughs> to get back into the playoffs. I mean, yes, they would do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's great to talk to you. Be safe. I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air though, Joe. Is that, that's fine. That's okay. And probably get a bite to eat or something like that. Yeah, go hang out with some <laughs> Think friends. Think of me. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having that's, me. That's uh, Joe Varden. He covers the NBA for The Athletic.